Hey there, and welcome to another trip report. I'm starting off my day in Stockholm, Sweden, catching an SAS flight down to Copenhagen on board one of their Airbus A320neos in economy class. Stockholm's main international airport is Arlanda Airport, the largest airport in Sweden, and located 40 kilometers north of Stockholm city center. The quickest and easiest way to access the airport from the city is using the Arlanda Express train, which runs every 15 minutes with a travel time of only 20 minutes. Tickets cost 340 Swedish krona, but for the more cost-conscious traveler, there's Flygbasarna, a bus service which connects the city to the airport for only 139 krona. I boarded at Torsplan with a 35-minute ride to Arlanda Terminal 4. Arlanda Airport consists of four terminals named 2, 3, 4, and 5. SAS uses Terminal 5, which is the largest and oldest terminal at Arlanda. To access Terminal 5 from the bus stop at Terminal 4, there's an indoor concourse called the Sky City, which connects Terminals 4 and 5 pre-security and includes shopping and restaurant facilities, as well as housing our Londa Central Station below it. The check-in area at Terminal 5 is divided into 7 zones, with SAS check-in for my flight at Zone 6. There's a bank of self-serve kiosks before entering the Zone 6 check-in hall, so I checked in and printed my boarding pass and baggage tags here. Heading into the Zone 6 hall, there's a separate line here for self-service baggage drop if you use the self-check-in machines, which allowed me to quickly drop off my bags. Terminal 5 has two security checkpoints, both serving all gates. The entrance to checkpoint F is in the Zone 6 hall, and the screening process took less than five minutes to complete. Exiting security into the duty-free shopping hall first, taking a look at the departures board, my flight will be using gate 5A this evening, which is located on Pier E. The gates of Terminal 5 are arranged on three piers, with Pier E being the middle pier of the three. There's ample seating at gate 5A, as it's located near the end of the concourse in a large open space. Taking a look at the aircraft flying us to Copenhagen this evening, I'll be on board this one and a half year old Airbus A320neo that was delivered new to SAS in February 2022. As of September 2024, SAS was operating 73 A320neos with an additional 14 on order. 30 of these active aircraft, including our aircraft today, are operated by SAS Connect, a subsidiary of SAS focused on short-haul connector flights within Europe. All of SAS's A320neos are configured the same way, with 180 standard economy class seats and no business class cabin. At the time of this flight, SAS was still a member of Star Alliance as one of its founding members. In September 2024, they left that group and joined the SkyTeam Alliance following a 20% acquisition in the airline by SkyTeam member the Air France KLM Group. Since leaving Star Alliance, obviously any perks that Star Alliance Gold members had with SAS, like priority boarding, no longer apply. That being said, at the time I took this flight, SAS boarded their flights by assigned group number, with groups A and B for priority boarding, which included SAS Eurobonus Gold and Diamond members, Star Alliance Gold members, and travelers on an SAS Plus ticket. The next groups for travelers on an SAS Go Smart or Go Light fare with a prepaid carry-on bag, and the last group for travelers on an SAS Go Light fare with no carry-on bag. Stepping on board, these aircraft are in an all-economy configuration with seats in a 3-3 layout. 
SAS does sell an SAS Plus fare on these routes, which includes similar perks to a business class ticket on other airlines, like priority boarding, security screening, and lounge access. But there's no difference in the seating on board the aircraft. I booked seat 21A for this flight, which is a window seat on the left side of the plane. The seats are incredibly simple, with a slimline design that has a grey fabric back and base, and no adjustable headrest at the top, but rather a somewhat disheveled looking piece of cloth. Taking a look at the space in the seat, the width is fairly standard, and at my height of 5 foot 10, I have a couple inches of space to spare for my knees, though it is pretty tight. These seats do recline, but only an inch or two. Getting my large backpack under the seat in front was quite tight as well, but ultimately it fit. There's also plenty of space in the overhead bins down both sides of each aisle. Looking around the seat a bit more, there are no entertainment screens at these seats, no AC power outlets, and no Wi-Fi available on board either. At the top of the seat back in front, we have a pocket for storing the provided reading materials. Up here, we have an air sickness bag, the onboard food and drink purchase menu, and the safety information card for this aircraft. Taking a closer look at the onboard menu, there's a range of different items available, from alcoholic beverages to sweet and salty snacks. On longer flights outside of Scandinavia, they have light meals and a broader range of alcohol and spirits available. The only complimentary offering on any of their flights within Europe is tea and coffee, and everything else has a surcharge. Also on the seat back near the top, we have a USB charging port and a small hook on the side for hanging your jacket. Further down the seat, we have a full-size tray table which flips out for use and is mounted on adjustable rails. And near the bottom of the seat back, we have another pocket for storing any of your own items. On the overhead panel above the seats, we have personal reading lights and adjustable air vents for each seat. The cabin is clean and will be comfortable enough for the next hour down to Copenhagen. Leaving the gate and on our way to Copenhagen, wheels up to wheels down time for this flight is about 50 minutes. Climbing away from Stockholm, since there's no Wi-Fi on board, SAS doesn't offer any kind of personal device streaming on these flights. The crew started their in-flight service shortly after takeoff, coming through with complimentary tea or coffee and other items for purchase. Hopping up to explore the cabin, there are three lavatories on board, with one at the front and two at the rear. Stepping into one of the lavatories at the back of the plane, it's super small, with a tiny sink and not even enough space for the mirror above the sink, with them instead placing it on the opposite wall. It is clean though and feels fairly modern. Back at my seat and watching the late night Scandinavian summer sunset out the window, we've started our descent towards Copenhagen's Kastrup Airport.
Touching down in Copenhagen, we're now taxiing over to our gate on Pier B. Castro Airport is divided into two terminals, T2 and T3, but they share a common airside passenger concourse and arrivals hall, with the passenger concourse split into six different piers, A through F. Piers A and B are dedicated to flights inside the Schengen area, and after disembarking, I can head straight to baggage claim to collect my luggage. Thanks for joining me for this trip report and I hope you enjoyed it. Now for some comments on the experience overall, as the flag carrier of Sweden, Denmark and Norway, SAS offers easy connections between different Scandinavian cities and the rest of Europe. Despite being easy and efficient, I was surprised at how no frills the whole experience felt. But then again, it is on par with what Lufthansa offers on their flights within Europe simple seats, and minimal complimentary offerings, with no onboard entertainment of any form. Compared to some low-cost airlines operating similar routes in Scandinavia, it'll really come down to the deal you find and what you need to bring in terms of carry-ons and checked luggage, to determine if booking SAS will be advantageous for you over the likes of Norwegian Air and others.